Hello and welcome to Allianz Park. Well, no, in fact, well, hello and welcome to Stonex. I forgot about the name change a couple of years ago for a very special double header. We've got Berkhamsted School hosting Morton Hall at Lacrosse in just a couple of moments' time. The players are out on the field, followed by Berkhamsted hosting Denston College in the Rugby Union fixture at 6.15pm. So stay with us for a very exciting evening of sport here at the home of Saracens. And alongside me, two people that know what they're talking about when it comes to lacrosse, because this is the very first Next Gen 15 broadcast of lacrosse. It's Joe Vila and Charlie Steed. Joe, very nice to have you along. Thank you very much. Excited for the evening? evening it should be a very very exciting evening charlie are you uh, i mean this is probably it? yeah one of the biggest fixtures that the girls have um and i think it's just a great opportunity to showcase um lacrosse and um, the talent we have the talent we had i suppose in the country for lacrosse and um, but it just gives those players an opportunity to showcase themselves and their skills and i've spoken to a few of them um just recently and they're all they're all nervous but they're all excited and I think they're all aware that this isn't like an everyday occurrence so it's just really exciting for them to experience this you know under the big lights it certainly is and we've got a bit of sunshine up we should point out that uh, Allianz Park being a uh, an artificial surface it's got the lines for uh, the sport that usually has rugby union but we've uh, we've adapted We've got some uh, some actually quite thick plastic markers down there. I, I was uh, I was moving a couple of them earlier just to find out and uh, got got myself a bit of a ticking off. But uh, the players will adapt to the uh, to the to the falsely created lines. Absolutely, uh, they are rubber drop-down lines. They may move uh, in the rubber crumb as the as the game goes on. But um, yeah, we're yet to get some permanent lacrosse lines down at Stone X but it's certainly something we could work towards yeah absolutely <laughs> I mean it's one of those isn't it we we adapt and I think yeah keep an eye on them to move but hopefully they uh, they stay in place we've worked hard to try our best to get the uh, dimensions right but any uh, fellow lacrosse viewers please don't shame us we've tried our best <laughs> well as long as they move in a way that makes it all a bit easier for everyone we're happy aren't exactly, we exactly yeah and so uh, been a good season so far for Berkhamstead on the lacrosse front yeah, I mean, Berkhamsted Lacrosse as a programme is is really big. Um, we boast 15, 16, 17 teams um, each year, and what you're seeing tonight is the first team, so that is really the aspirational sort of team from everybody else's perspective. We've got girls here that are, um, some of them are national players, some of them, you know, all the way down to just playing at school level. So for some pupils that potentially tonight will be the pinnacle of their lacrosse playing career um, and this really is sort of built up at Berkhamsted as 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 a big sporting occasion as Chaz said this is sort of the big event of the year for them so a huge amount of excitement but um, season's going well so far a lot of our players are also uh, representing the first netball team and um, they've had their county round of nationals last week. So this is, this is sort of the time now where focus turns to lacrosse over the next few weekends and they start to build themselves as a team. And as I was sort of trawling through the history, Berkhamsted have had quite good success at the nationals. One of the most successful schools out there. That's a good thing to, good thing to have under the belt. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's... It, the credit really to our girls they, they are resilient they work hard they put in the hours um, and I think it's really exciting and I think that's why it's really exciting today because we have all these girls here who are watching the older generation and I think that probably helps them be motivated and encourages them to play um, every Saturday like they do um, and obviously as, as a under 13 girl watching the uh, idea that maybe this that could be them in a few years time is, is really exciting um, but yeah, we, we, we try and stay in it, I suppose, but that, that is down to the girls and the hard work and commitment that they have. And also, I think the love for lacrosse, I think if anyone came to any of our training sessions and saw the girls, they do all just love it. They love sport, they love playing with their friends, and I think that really does you know bode well when we are playing tough tom competitions. It certainly does, and I suppose that really, in many ways, is the point of tonight, isn't it? It's about inspiring some of those, some of those younger girls, some of those prospective girls, as well as to, to what you know, sport at Berkhamsted has to offer, what what the game of lacrosse has to offer, and what opportunities there are at being able to play at a venue like this. 
Absolutely. Put, putting girls' sport, giving girls particularly a platform and an opportunity to showcase themselves and to inspire younger pupils to, you know, to show them that there is a platform for girls in sport um, and it does continue beyond school. But, you know, as far as Berkhamsted sport is concerned, we we value every sport the same whether it's male or female a big program or a small program and we're really clear in that messaging to our pupils and hopefully they're able to see that tonight we certainly are well kickoff or well the start is approaching um well call it the center draw center draw you know i well, <laughs> you, you got a you got a debutante over here <laughs> A few debutants on the morton hall side as well but we're uh, we're just awaiting things to get started it's uh Berkhamstead certainly look ready. Five o'clock start, but it's a we'll, we'll ease into it. Yeah, it's an early start, and it's hard to get all of the spectators down from Berkhamstead that are on their way. So I imagine over the course of the first half, the audience and the crowd will grow somewhat, and um, hopefully the the noise and the encouragement will get louder with it. So we are just about ready, both sets of players here on this famous surface, almost ready to go. Morton Hall have travelled a long way, all the way from Shropshire to be here. I was actually at their namesake prep school back in my youth. Sadly closed down now, let's hope we don't see anything like that out on the field today. As Morton Hall progress nice and quickly here, moving the ball around nicely. Searching for some space, get the shot away. Great save from Kate Berkhamsted. Morton Hall had first possession, but Berkhamsted now taking the save and looking potentially like they're going to control the transition into the attack. Got a big clear there from Kate, looking at Molly as she transitioned it down, looking for those three players. Great side there from Morton. Berkhamstead looking comfortable early on. It's a nice feed into the fan. Girls just looking at moving the ball, probably just finding their feet, and getting a bit of a tempo as they settle into the game. Just encouraging them to relax, calm the nerves, test the waters. Early bit of physical contact. Expect to see a bit more of that as things go on. Ball goes to ground, but tidied up by Fern in goal for Morton Hall. That's a great, that is a great clear. Great clear. Strong transition now up the pitch. Morton looking to make the most of that fast break opportunity. The Pickering twins for Morton Hall. Oh, that was great brilliant defence from, defense from Amelia. Amelia. Yeah, really solid one v one there. I think that what's, that's what surprises people by lacrosse. I think a lot of the time it is quite physical. It is called, well, it's not meant to be a contact sport, but um, yeah, as the game has grown over the years, it definitely has been a lot more physical. Well, we don't mind seeing a bit of physicality. Berkhamstead moving up really nicely here. Nicole showing great pace. Do keep an eye on those Pickering twins. In attack for Morton Hall as moving forward comes Gemma yeah. and the opening score for Berkhamstead. Great start for Berkhamstead, well done Gemma. 
I have to say, I had some insight on that. They, um, Gemma and Abby were actually practicing, practicing that after training, after school, yesterday evening up at Chesham Road Fields where we play lacrosse. And it's actually amazing to see it pay off. Pay off. Yeah, they were practicing that for about half an hour after their session. Um, so they will be delighted that they've managed to get a goal from that. Well, practice making perfect for Berkhamstead. And of course, those are the two in particular that we will be keeping an eye on today both in the England under-20s training squads and uh, exciting times coming up potentially for them if selected in Easter for that under-20s World Cup squad. Morton Hall get their oh, shot away and level it up. Shot Phoebe Jones with the score. Berkhamsted defence now getting together to discuss that one. I think it's going to be end to end today. You can see that both teams just are settling in, but I think it's going to be a really challenging and exciting game. Lots of goals to be scored. <laughs> Morton Hall. Straight back on it, looking for a quick strike. One, two. Strike. Oh, great save. Brilliant save from Kate. My, my namesake in goal. Not the first name, I hasten to add. Brilliant save from Kate. So Morton haven't scored off the fast break. They're now setting up around goal. And this set up play, six go above the, above the line. Six v six with the goalkeeper as well. And Morton is setting up with two behind, looking to try and break down the space and create something. That's strong pressure from Helena. Great side there from um, Abby, Amy. <laughs> Pickering to the captain, Barnes. Morton just moving the ball around, waiting to go to goal. The calm before the calm before the storm. Patient stuff this from Morton Hall. Barnes, the captain, has the ball. Now they may look to strike. Jones to Pickering. Keep an eye on Morton. I think they're trying to play two in the hole confuse the Berkhamstead defence. That was a great peel earlier. That was actually a free player, but Morton didn't pick it up. And ball's behind, setting up behind now. Pickering fires out to Kenny. Kenny back to Jones. Long spell of possession this for Morton Hall. Jones has a go. Good defence from Berkhamstead. Still Morton Hall. Morton pulling it really wide, trying to draw Berkhamsted out. Berkhamsted is saying safe on their 11 metre. Great cut there, great work from Amy. Straight back to Kate, really good, strong defence. Palm collected. They weren't rushing to get back possession, just maintaining their teamwork. Morton have defended really quickly, man on to get back on Berkhamsted. They're going to have to really think about how they create something now to get free. And so looking through that last little phase of the game, you've seen obviously a long period of possession there for Morton Hall, but is that what you're looking for from a defensive point of view from Berkhamsted, that patience equally in defence, not wanting to jump out and try and make something happen, but just waiting and letting it come to them? I think ultimately a turnover of possession and not a goal... Um, against against Berkhamsted is what we're looking for, and if that takes a while to break down, then that then that shows patience um, and timing, which which is key. I think at the beginning of a lacrosse game, there's often a bit of sounding each other out and bedding in and not making a quick move. That's Pickering. The two goals from Morton so far have come from fast fast break opportunities, not set up play. So the longer Berkhamsted can continue, Morton's sort of set up phase I think the more chance they've got of breaking it down yeah we see Romilly Pickering score there we can see it on the replay here Pickering one of the two twins 
makes her way up. Great drive. It's a great drive, and and Berkham said where obviously um, Amy was looking like she wanted to get um, straight in there, but was worried about shooting space. So if there is someone coming in to shoot, you cannot get in front of them um, and prevent that shot from going. So Berkham said now in possession, Gemma's bringing it through. Oh, a great block from Morton. Brilliant pace from Gemma, but well, stopped by Morton Hall, who now make their way back up again, leading 2-1. Eight minutes gone. Really good work there from straight attack for Molly, who's chasing that ball down to that final restrainer. Um, the restraining lines today are actually um, the dotted lines. Um, so we always have to have three defenders behind, but three players behind that line. So currently our three straight attackers for Berkham said and three straight defenders for Morton. And the attacking job on the redefend is really to double team the ball and try and win that possession before Morton can get or before that attacking team can get it over the line. That's a great save by Kate. She's really aware where the ball is and you, you might not be able to hear from up here but she is a really vocal part of the team and she is leading, leading that defence and making sure they're aware where the ball is um, doing her job really well. Made some crucial interventions so far, has Kate Morton back in possession again. They're starting to have a real influence at the moment. Pickering, the scorer, with the ball, gets the ball in. Another Gosh. shot comes in, but I think it may have just glanced off Kate there. I get an interesting rule um, for lacrosse is after a shot, the closest person to the ball as it goes off the uh, back line actually wins the ball. So that's why you saw then Kate running out of goal, chasing that ball. Um, to make sure that, that Berkham said one possession. Kate does like to travel quite far up the pitch, which is something that you don't see of many goalies. Um, but she's she's very confident and really it really works well with the Berkham said team. From the Pep Guardiola school of goalkeeping <laughs> is Kate. Her side moving into space here. Can they level things up? Could have a chance, oh. and they have him. Great pick up there from Ella. She just was really no, keen. No goal. Oh. Berkham said we're offside. It looks like, and so they have not allowed that goal. Celebrations curtailed. No score for Berkham said. Stays two one. But that was great play from Berkham said. Again, really good chasing down from Molly there. Morton on the attack. The ball's now down. Excellent oh, really good there. turnover. Abby makes her way up the field. I think Berkhamsted just need to think about looking after that ball a little, a little better. We're, we're really quick to release on the first offer. And that's where we've been getting a turnover of possession. Oh, great save from the Morton goalie. Really good save. Gemma was looking to add to her tally there. Putting the goalkeeper under real pressure here as well. Oh, well intercepted. And that was an empty stick check, so Berkham stood back on the attack. Well defended by Morton, but they've come under a little spell of pressure here, having had a lot of pressure of their own, but now a chance through Pickering to move things up. Tight defence from Berkhamstead, but Pickering gets the ball away. And now Kenny just calms things down. Really nice space here from Morton, allowing them to just get their breath, gain their thoughts after that fast spell of possession from Berkhamstead. And also allowing themselves to just see where the space has come. Creating that space for one of their players to drive. And now we have quarter time. And that is the end of the first quarter. A tense opening quarter. An opening quarter that ends with the visitors. Morton Hall all the way from Shropshire. Holding a 2-1 lead over the host Berkhamstead. But we have plenty of time yet to come. And we'll take a look at those three goals.
fast start from Berkhamstead. They opened it up with a lovely score. Yeah. Some great move in the ball here. They're just looking for the options, taking their time. And I think that's probably what we need to see Berkhamstead do more in this, this second quarter. Some great work there from Gemma and Abby. And like I say, that is straight up, straight out from the practice yesterday. And that's just really great to see them working together. Something that we really encourage here at Berkhamstead, working as a team and making sure that you can involve as many players as possible in that, in that goal. Morton Hall struck back with a really, really patient score, actually, wasn't it? They took their time. Yeah, really patient, and Morton are doing a great job of looking after that ball, making really good decisions, and that is just a fantastic angle. She'd moved the keeper, she looked for that spot, top corner shot, really impressive, so a great start from them. Kiara Kenny, it was, that levelled it up. It was time for Pickering, one of the twins, to nudge her side in front. And there we were talking earlier, Berkham said worried about the shooting space, so Amy stayed clear and that just allowed um, Morton to have a, have a great shot on goal and again, really good finish from them. Certainly was a good finish. Sends us in at the end of the first quarter. Morton Hall leading Berkhamstead 2-1. Back underway for the start of the second quarter. Morton Hall have possession, 2-1 lead to begin this second quarter. Yeah, Morton immediately got possession off the draw and they've gone into a setup, just gaining control again. They've got that 2-1 lead. They've got really good space, Morton. I think that's something that you can see really clearly. They're using the space of the pitch. Really, it really does hurt defenders. Oh. Great, great defence there from B and Amelia. Working yeah, together. great slide from Amelia. She's got really good vision, actually, hasn't she? You can see it on the replay now. Yeah, great work. Just sticks up, making that shot really hard to get off with power. Go on, B. Real competition for the ball there. Just runs out of play. Morton Hall ball. Sides coming out firing early on. Graham advancing up the field. Pickering. And the skipper Barnes, one of two co captains alongside Henshaw in this Morton Hall team. It's Kenny. Setting up the scissors from the top again. They like that, don't they, Morton yeah. Hall? Attack from the top. The angle they like coming from the top, so I think Berkham said not money to adjust their defence slightly there, just realising that that is the, the place of attack that they like to come from, and making sure that they are ready for those slides early. So set up behind again, using using behind can be a really good tactic in lacrosse in order to get rid of your defender, open up a bit more space, make the defender have to look in opposite directions, much easier to lose them that way. Barnes gets oh. the shot away and scores Emma Barnes the captain she likes that right-handed shot top left cutting off on that angle that's two now past Kate using that um, that shot and if it's working for her then that's great you see it here and Barnes came from a long way away to get that shot in it was just like we we're talking they want to come from the top um, and like we say 
likes to use their right hand and just making sure as a Burke percent defender we're really closing that option off um, and you can see they really use the space well create the space to allow that that player to run in in their right hand a possession from the draw for Morton again really starting to take control in this second quarter right Burkham have turned over possession Abby's got the ball they really need to look after this ball now this is an important transition I think for them for the momentum of the game we need a momentum shift great transition there by Annie just looking for options now Burke instead Morton are great at the, at the re-defend and really trying to slow that Burke instead ball down it's important now Berkhamsted aren't forcing something and then getting that turnover when they haven't had a chance to establish. Great turnover from Morton. This game just feels really erratic. Um, as we said earlier, some buses have arrived and the um, spectator, the number of spectators are growing and you can really hear that roar in the crowd. It's starting to create um, a really great atmosphere. It certainly is. I'm glad I got here early to get the car parked, let me tell you. <laughs> been here a few times and been, uh, been somewhere and somewhere in the uh, inner ring road before a little delay here just while a knock to one of the Morton Hall players and that just looking on the screen play. at all those parents and members of staff and um, students from Birkham said it is really it's a big occasion at our school um, and they're loving it by all singing and joining in I just think it's, it creates such a nice atmosphere um, and I know I know the girls will really appreciate the support that um, all the fans are bringing. As the girls enter the pitch earlier, the boys' uh, rugby team, who've arrived ahead of their game against Denstone, created there they are, created a tunnel um, for them, and it's great to hear them really supporting their um, their friends out on the pitch today. Well, that's what school sports all about, isn't it? Supporting each other and being part of a whole community of sports teams and the whole community of the school as Barnes works her way forward she's having a real influence Emma Barnes great defence there by Ella really really good body positioning looking at the hips she just forced the player to pass the ball she was looking to drive and Ella was straight on it that's what we like to see from our defence we've got some really young players um, on, on both sides actually who are having their first experiences of first team play and you can see the, the physicality and the step up from under 15 play for those those pupils and it, it's really impressive to see Ella being one of those you know her defense is so strong she's got a great eye for the ball she's not afraid um, and, and she's showing that today great defense by Gemma she's really sh shutting this option off as you can see Morton are still wanting to go down that side using their right hand using the right side channel and uh, Gemma just really tight on that 1v1 shutting that option off and I think that's what Berkham said probably need to do a bit more of so Morton looking to set up at the top again. That's where they like to set up. We've talked about that. Trying to create a double team in order to free up a player. It's a great save. Not this time. Not meant to be for them. Barnes trying to produce some wizardry, but Kate equal to it. An opportunity as Evie. Now Berkhamsted really up. need to look after this ball. Another opportunity to now calm play not try and push the fast break, set something up, take control, get themselves back in this game. And after the initial pace, they do just that. Slow it down, back in the hands of Evie. It's really yeah. nice, Evie like, yeah, hand there. Let's just say slow down, slow the pace of the game down. It's really nice to see them adjusting play to make sure that they can keep possession of this ball. Yeah. And there's a shot. A shot from Anna there coming in. She's a left-handed player, so um, adds a different element. And there was space there, but unfortunately the shot didn't come off. Picked up again by Berkhamstead. That's a great save from Emily Fern. Berkhamstead really with their first window of attacking opportunity of this second quarter. I'd really love to just close that gap. Had a great season last year. The many girls retained from that squad of last year. Yeah, I was actually having that conversation on the way over. We, um, in comparison to other schools, we've actually retained retained quite a number of um, of girls from the from last year's squad. But 
with a real mix of year 11s and 12s um, in there as well. And what's lovely is that there are some girls that have had a season in the seconds. They've also um, managed to get their sneak their way into the first team this year based off you know real hard work so it's really nice to see them that's actually a yellow card now for morton i believe it was a check towards the head um when Gemma was driving in so in lacrosse if there's ever um a check to the head or um then it'll always be a yellow card so if ever that the, the head is kind of the safety zone that would yeah would always would always um be a card yeah there's now a free position. Gemma driving in. Great shot from Gemma. Really good composure. She used her feet. Nice to see her run all the way in to create that space and get away from those defenders who are chasing her. Yeah, really strong free position there. So free position on goal in lacrosse is essentially like a penalty. Uh, it's not just the attacker versus the goalkeepers. Um, you have to clear the 11 fan, as we saw, um, and Morton were there, able to defend. So here she is, foot up on that hash. Morton ready to go in. So there is an element of defence on them as well. Gemma has fantastic speed off the mark and that just enabled her to get in front of those defenders and then put that shot off. That's a really strong free position, well done. Confident play from Gemma and a second score for her. Closes the gap to 3-2. Morton away with the draw. Morton have been very, very strong tonight on the draw and have come away with quite a few of the draws, which just means they can just take an extra second to settle the ball, find composure again, while I think Burke instead are trying to push and win possession of the ball back. Morton do look really relaxed and confident on the ball, don't they? Yeah. They don't look pressured or unnerved by Berkhamsted's um, defence. They just look completely in control, I say that. And then there's been a, a, a ground ball, but um, they are playing with sort of assured, they, they, it looks self-assured in terms of what they're trying to create and how they're playing. And currently Morton are obviously manned down because of the yellow card and with the restrictions of always having three P players behind the restrainer. Um, so Berkhamsted here are looking to double the ball um, but again, like Joe just said, Morton are doing really well, keeping composure. Um, and I think you'll see in this period that Morton won't try to go to goal. They are simply trying to knock those seconds off the clock. I was going to say, yeah, the, almost their style of play here, being so patient, probably plays into their hands right now while they're a player down. Definitely, just run down the clock, get rid of that two minutes, get their player back on and then start to set up again. Berkhamsted really want to be making the making the most of, of the double team opportunities. It is absolutely exhausting work. Norton are pulling so wide um, and it means Berkhamsted have got to work really, really hard to try and pick that ball off. Um, so it's about working together, it's about working as a unit and communicating. At the minute, we're floundering a little bit. Oh! That was too tempting, I think, um, as an opportunity on goal. Great now save from Kate and Berkhamstead make their way up. Could they level the game here? There's Fast an opportunity. opportunity here. They won't quite do it. The referee's whistle is gone. And it's another yellow card <laughs> for Morton Hall. They're going to be down to eight for a period here. So Morton's defensive unit possibly need to take some of that cool, calm, collected approach that the attacking unit have. Um, but as a result of that, Berkhamsted are in possession at the top of uh, the fan. And I think that first yellow card, the time has now gone, so we are back looking at a 6v5 for Berkhamsted in this situation. So still one down, but just a different card now in play. Absolutely. Berkhamsted looking to make use of it. Nearly, nearly managing to do so. You know, looking at that attacking unit, you know, we've said there's experience, but there's also a lot of young players who are really, are really sort of taking in that moment. And I think it does take a while to bed into a game like this. Um, and, and we're just seeing a few mistakes being made. But as long as we're learning from them and using them as opportunities to improve, then, then I don't see that as a bad thing. Morton Hall goalkeeper under all kinds of pressure here. Great and work runs there. off the field of play. Yeah, that's amazing. We really try and encourage active play, active goalkeepers who aren't just stuck in their um, goal, but like to come out and be field players. And, and Morton certainly showed that then. Um, it was a shame that, that 
as they're down to five, there wasn't enough help really for her to release that ball, but she did a good job. Great check there, just to stop Helena getting the shot off. And again, Berkham said are in possession. Again, taking their time, waiting for that opportunity to come. Yeah. Referees just gonna have a little chat about something here. One of them spotted something. It's been a funny second quarter, this, hasn't it? It's been a bit it's bitty been. at times. It has been a bit bitty. It looks like they're possibly looking at the at their watch, and I wonder on the timing of the two minutes, bearing in mind there's six players back on the field. Time might just be going quickly, but that do, does feel quite quick to me. Yeah, it feels like a quick yellow card, that. I think they're just conferring as the timing. Our director says that our time is right, so he doesn't know what the referees are up to. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so in lacrosse it's a running clock um, until the last two minutes of the game and um, depending on what rules they've actually set out for this game, but an international game you would play stop, stop clock for the last two minutes, so any dead ball would be would be a stopped clock. Well, of course we're under a slight bit of time pressure here today anyway because Denston College in the rugby match later on have got to uh, shoot off home afterwards before, uh, before lights out in the boarding house I think, so... Uh, we are under a little bit of time pressure, so we're... Uh Absolutely. Time efficiency is very important <laughs> this evening. We're hoping to see in this second half uh, the boys warming up as much as they can on the track around the pitch, and then as soon as the girls finish, the boys should be running on to, to do final preparations. So we're hoping for a real kind of smooth transition, not a lot of time for spectators to, to pop off before they need to come back and get, and get some more action in. More importantly, the commentary team have got to watch their liquid intake. <laughs> in this first game. So I, I think we've now seen that, yeah, I think they might, Mortal might have come on a little bit too soon because we do have gone back to a 6v5, so there must have been some confusion confusion with that timing. Um, and Berkham said again, have a player up. It has been quite a lengthy delay. It took a long time to sort that one out. Yeah, Still based on your timings that you've got, it, I think we might be looking at another 20 seconds or so of man down um, when they restart play. It took a while for the refereeing team to get that one sorted out, but we're back underway now. Berkhamstead with possession. They remain just a single score down, looking to level it up before half time. You can see that you can sense Berkhamsted are desperate to make the most of this one-up player opportunity and I just wonder whether actually having some control and some time to sort of regain um, an upper hand would be good. Get Georgia shot. then really demanding the ball from Helena. She really wanted to receive that ball, felt she was open for the space but it wasn't released. And going for the shot, one of several National Academy players in this Berkhamsted lineup. Not quite managing to get that one on goal, but there's another opportunity here, perhaps, for Berkhamstead. Just too easy to give that first feed, that first option in. And there we go, that's half-time. That is the end of the second quarter. Berkhamstead did well. Got on top, got the score, and played with a player's advantage for a good four minutes or so there take us into the half-time break. We can see the Berkhamsted team uh, coming together here at the end of that half um, under Matt Sharp, the new head of lacrosse, so he's just come in four weeks ago um, and is really starting to get to know that team and work with individuals, um, so it's nice, it's nice to see how they are uh, working as a group. Half-time here at Stonex, Berkhamsted 2, Morton Hall 3. We truly do believe there's not a team in the country we can't beat if we're on our game. There'll be teams out there who have better technical players than us, but don't have the same team spirit that we do. In terms of the team dynamic, in terms of how we are with each other around school, around around the pitch, around... You know,
Yeah, I'm on form. I'm still loving it. I've still got the trophy on my desk. I'm really lucky this year. The players have been unbelievable. You know, for me, it's all about culture. That's what's really important and setting that culture. And the girls delivered that culture the whole year. The year 13s who really took on leading the year 12s. And yeah, showing that character. It's good though, me and Gaz are co captains for the team of the so that helps. And yeah. it's been really fun captaining, especially being all the way from the 7th up. I think it's been amazing to be captain, especially co captains allowed. And I don't think we really knew how much we could achieve. Like, we knew we were a really good team, but it was just amazing to be able to prove it to everyone. We take part in three competitions, and obviously, being crowned double champions is just absolutely incredible. Start the season with crowned champions. They're so resilient, which I'm really, really proud of, particularly after they had a defeat against uh, Millfield and then they had to come back again and play them in the quarterfinals. Um, losing by one goal is, is tough in a, in a netball game. Back to it here at the Stonex. Berkhamstead playing from right to left in their dark blue kits. It's Morton Hall playing from left to right, who lead us in their sky blue kits. 3-2 as we begin this second half with Berkhamstead in possession, looking to level things up nice and early. It's great to see that Berkhamstead have possession, really want them to take control now. Hope they've had a really great and inspiring half-time team talk. They're feeling motivated, hopefully, to come out and um, make a big impression in this next quarter. Great pick up there from Evie. Oh, unlucky there from Abby, but again, let's just see if we can gain some composure. It's not easy to be in this situation, is it? You know, a huge home crowd, a big spectacle, you're feeling under pressure, in possession of the ball, wanting to do something with it. Um, you know, I think it will really show who our sort of cool, calm heads are this evening now as we enter into the business end of, of this game. Oh, lovely. Great composure there from Beckham, so I think that's what they needed, a bit of time on the ball, working together and not forcing um, any of the feeds. That's a really, really great goal there. Yeah, Abby did wait for that, didn't she? She had the ball, passed it off, waited for a good moment and then just saw that opportunity. So it went to Anna, into Abby, moved that goalkeeper and as that goalkeeper's moving left, shot, go, uh, shot in bottom right, really good execution. She, you can tell she's pleased with that. Abby. So we're level. Yeah, the game is now on we are indeed game on scores level three apiece abby with the score and those two england under 20s training squad players getting on the score sheet for berkhamstead abby and Gemma making a difference here and they've helped drag their side back to level pegging and the barnes has been a real threat for Morton Hall though. Again, you can just see Morton creating that space, keeping the ball quite high up top. Um, but it'd be interesting to see. I think we're doing really well behind Berkhamstead, it's closing off, off behind goal, so they are forced to attack from the top. It's just creating that space so they can take the drive on their right hand, which is clearly what Morton would like to do. James to Barnes. You can see Gemma setting up on defence, trying to push her and force the Morton uh, player onto her left weaker side. But Morton are holding that ball really well under pressure. They're not giving it away cheaply. Oh, maybe I should say that more often. <laughs> <laughs> Berkhamstead uh, back in possession. Some great defensive work. I think Berkhamstead have changed their tactics slightly. High pressure. Really strong defence there from Morton number two. So Berkhamsted starting to set up from the top. What I do like about the Berkhamsted play is it feels threaten threatening every time. You can see that the attacker really wants to um, make something out of 
having having the ball in their in their stick and they are driving to goal they're looking threatening and they're trying to draw that defender to open up space so it is great to get that attacking feel isn't yeah. it down that end but, and i think it's really nice to see that they all got the confidence to do that i think that's really exciting um, so we're on a free position from goal top hash georgia oh, oh great, great save. save really good save morton keeper is in control here she's playing really well today Burn has been important for her side here. That's tidily done by Morton Hawk. Move it forward. And Berk said we're really trying to slow that ball down. Oh, we just missed that free player coming through then. Berkenstead's head turned. Great fast break there from Morton, working together, picking out that free player as Berkenstead weren't quite set up ready for that transition. That was a really good team goal. From a big chance at one end, it's a score at the other for Phoebe Jones from Orton Hall. And a well-worked one it was. It's a lovely pick out and also a great take. It's just unlucky. And he had slid, it was just, just that fraction too late. And Denstone supporters have arrived and um, it looks like are supporting Morton, so it's quite nice for Morton to have a bit of encouragement on that side as well. Stoppage due to a Berkhamsted injury. Looks Not like sure who that is. For one of the Berkhamsted players. Gives us just a quick chance to let you know that the rugby game, Berkhamsted versus Denston College, has been pushed back 10 minutes to 6.25 just to allow this game to reach a full conclusion. So that is very good news indeed for all involved. Phoebe Jones there, the scorer, just on your screens, who's just put her side in the lead. This well. gives both teams a great opportunity just to have a chat, see where see where they're at and reconvene also have a quick drinks break it's um i think sophie our berkhamster player is getting treatment now she's indeed and a chance as well while we just have a break to uh, tell you about what's coming up here on next gen 15 and what is coming up is one of the busiest saturdays that we've known eight different schools will be in live action here on the rugby fields for Next Gen 15, we've got Millfield against Wellington College. 2.30 kickoff on Saturday. At the same time as that, Halebury versus Aundel. That's 2.30 as well. At 3 o'clock, it's over at Rugby School for another one of those 200 years of rugby football celebratory games. They are hosting Stowe. And then also at 3 o'clock, Marlborough College against Eton College and that is Marlborough College's Festival of Sport where they are having a whole day of action all fixtures at home including an old boys fixture which we will have live for you as well at one o'clock so it is a busy busy Saturday here on Next Gen 15 do join us for that any one of those games of your choosing maybe a couple they're all going to be up there in perpetuity you can watch them all I'm sure many of you will in the build-up to the evening's Rugby World Cup action. But here at the Stonex, we've got a bit of a game on our hands. We have got a game, and Matt Sharp is using this opportunity to get another few pointers into um, to the Berkhamsted team. It's a really lovely... Um, it's just so nice to sit up here and watch Berkhamsted play Morton. We only ever get to meet them in tournament play throughout the season. We don't get that proper... Um, you know, full four 15 minute fixture with them. So an opportunity to sound them out, to get to feel, you know, what they like to do. We've already identified that they really like to set things up from the top and attack. This will all be really helpful, not just today, but moving through into tournament season and getting a feel for, for how Morton play when we hopefully reach, um, reach the latter stages of nationals this year. Yeah, I think, th I think this game actually came um, from we uh, Berkham said hold a Berkham said tens tournament at the start of the season um, it's a pre-season tournament um, which just gives them all the players um, the opportunity to, to try out in their teams get playing lacrosse again um, and it's a really nice tournament and I think when Berkham said and Morton did actually meet a few weeks ago at that tournament it was really feisty and interesting and close and I think that um, Matt the head of lacrosse was really keen to play them again and I mean, what a great opportunity to do it here at Stonex Stadium. 
Well, close games between these two seem seem to be the, the way it always goes. You say it was close a couple of weeks ago, and looking back at some of those meetings in the Nationals, they always seem to be within a couple of scores of each other. So clearly two well-matched sides over the years. And Definitely, and, and such different setups because Morton is a relatively small school with a small lacrosse program. Um, you know, they'll often travel very far just with one team. We're, we're more about sort of big numbers and getting lots and lots of girls playing. Um, but I think the competitive edge from both teams always means that it's a it's an excellent performance and um, you know they've got some fantastic coaches at Morton who are incredibly passionate about the game and they are able to produce um, some some brilliant players who, who who play really creatively so yeah a really good match and a different style to playing a South team and um, when we play Surrey teams they all play quite similarly we play them a lot so yeah as Chaz said this is just a really great experience Morton Hall back up and running now and looking to extend their advantage for three they lead really good defense there from Amelia just stayed really tight to her player contact on the hips as soon as the ball was picked up and drove us straight out of the 11 meter which is exactly what we want from one of our straight defenders Morton here still trying they really like that right channel really want to get the ball in their right hand, take that shot that we've seen work for them so many times. But I think the Berkhamstead defenders may have clocked on slightly to that tactic. Pickering with the ball in hand, Romilly Pickering. It's also worth noting that you know the lacrosse season runs all the way through to March, so it's a really long season, and we are we are only four weeks in. So both teams have got a long time to work on different aspect, aspects of the game and build together. You know, unlike the rugby season that is very short and intense, and then um, you know turns into different formations of the game come January. This is a bit of a long slog, and therefore teams are very early. They're not the finished article. They're still trying to work themselves out, let alone their opposition that they face each game. Yeah, and like Joe said, a lot, quite a few of these girls are from year 11, so have, have never played um, with anyone else other than their year group. And I think that that is a huge factor um, that plays when they join the senior setup, but really exciting. And I, I think they all love the opportunity. Oh, and there's a shooting space call on Annie there. So she just slid in. Oh, no, it was Amelia. She just went in, ready for the slide, but unfortunately got caught the wrong side. Phoebe Jones then with a chance. Phoebe Jones' is shot is well saved. Great save great by save. Kate, really good. Another great out like there, straight away. Another Re big moment from Kate. Yeah, you see on the replay, I was going straight down the goal. And here we've got great def great defence here from the straight attack. Yeah, Ella is hunting, and as a result of Ella hunting, she's got possession of the ball. That is such a good redefend. Well, great a decision. Really good a decision. really good, good decision. Just hold that. That's maturity, isn't it? Yeah. Shame from Ella there. And Ella being one of our Year 11 students, that is really good maturity. Great decision making. Great hustling. She hustled hard to win that ball back, and then did make the right decision to allow Berkhamstead to keep possession. Certainly was good maturity and it's now their side. The opportunity which they take. Great work there from Ashley. You can see she's really pleased and the girls are really pleased with her. As you can see here, great teamwork again from the Berkhamstead girls. Looking threatening. Yeah, good decision from B. She saw Ashley poking out. And then Ashley's in. really taken on two slash nearly three players there and able to um, held possession. Even Great with stick movement. Yeah, even <laughs> with a check towards the head as well. She still managed to hold onto the ball. And I think that just shows the strength that, that, that these girls have. Movement like Michael Jordan in the air there. <laughs> Outstanding work. <laughs> the reward for that patient play from Ella. Allows Berkhamstead the opportunity to level the game up as we head into the break after this third quarter. We are four apiece and we have a big, big final quarter 
to enjoy very shortly. We truly do believe there's not a team in the country we can't beat if we're on our game. There'll be teams out there who have better technical players than us but don't have the same team spirit that we do. In terms of the team dynamic, in terms of how we are with each other around school, around around the pitch, around you know, around where we where we play our football is huge. I think we can win every trophy. Final quarter of the game. And as you say, Joe, it is a big quarter coming. Big quarter. And um, when Berkhamsted played St. Cats last year at this very event, it ended in a draw. Yeah. And it was goal for goal in the final quarter, 11 all. And I just have a feeling this is going to be a similar experience in terms of how close it is. What a goal for Morton. Straight off the draw. They wanted that. Emma Barnes moving the ball aggressively to kick off this final quarter lizzie melia with the score morton hall out the traps fast morton have done really well this whole game with the draw they've they've hustled hard they've won the ground balls and as you can see here great feed fast break situation and they are Berkham said are just caught a little bit slow there unfortunately it was a determined and aggressive run that from Emma Barnes well finished off by so Melia and Berkham said yeah. on the run again yeah they've set up slightly lower now to try and cover themselves um, in case a fast break comes again but Morton definitely seem to be taking control they're taking confidence from each goal setting themselves up still at the top Berkhams are going to have to really think about digging in here, being really brave and committing. That is awesome defence from Gemma. I think they're very switched on again. Belt Morton are wanting to go down that right channel. It was really good to see Gemma read that slide high, double the ball and not even give them the opportunity to take the drive on. Yes, great defence there. Really good defence and turnover. Great hustle, she really wants that ball and just gives Burko a time now for breathing room, a transition and hopefully possession of the ball. Great work there from Abby, change of hands, it just goes to show, you know, put your stick work in and that just looks effortless for her. And there is a lot of space on this pitch, there is a lot of room to be moving that ball before they're under pressure from the defence. We just can't help but offload at the first yeah. opportunity. I think we're, you can see the girls are excited, they're pumped, they're ready, they want to score the goals, and they've all got the confidence to take on to take on Mawson, but sometimes it's important that we stay nice and calm and try and keep our discipline as well. guess at the moment that's been the difference between the two sides that's slightly more patient play from Morton Hall versus a, a faster pace of play from Berkhamsted. Yeah Berkhamsted just do not seem organized in that's this transition into the defensive unit um, from my perspective Morton were open last time because we just had less players down that end and we're not reacting quick enough so you know they really need to switch on quickly in terms of their transition down to, to defense and if, and, and if they don't they're likely to get caught again. I'm trying not to be, you know, biased on the Berko side here, but it's, it's frustrating to sit here and watch. Barnes has a go again, but the whistle went before she scored. So that is shooting space again there, which actually does Berko a favour because the goal did go in and it was an absolutely excellent shot there. Again, on that right side, again, Berko really need to note that and not give um, the player the opportunity to take that. We've now got a free position, so hopefully Kate can come up with a big save. Just be a bit careful here that Nicole isn't going to shoot in space again. Oh, unlucky there. 
and the umpire has given a second shooting space a week? No, it was a push. A push, I believe. Okay. Barnes really has been the one to watch from a Morton Hall perspective. Berkhamsted determined to put her under pressure here. This is a huge moment. Oh, Barnes oh, off the, the post. Barnes' speed off the mark is really impressive. She's a fantastic player, um, making her, it's a shame she didn't get that goal. That was a great pick up there from Evie, just great speed, one-handed. She knew her job and that was just to get the ball out of the fence. Berkhamsted have survived that dangerous moment and they create one of their own here. They need a goal, they need two really, they've got one here, have they? No, just gone wide. Look for all the world as though it was in. That's really unlucky there for Abby. I think she hustled hard. Oh, unlucky again. Unlucky Annie. Oh, that, that Great pace. running from Berkhamsted. Great work, Abby, uh, Amy. And great work from Gemma there, hustling to cover Amy's back. There's a lot of great, isn't there? We it's, like yeah, that word. <laughs> the ground that Gemma covered, just yeah. to get herself in, in yeah, so that Gemma line. Gemma is actually a national sprinter. Um, she does a lot of athletics, the side of her, of her lacrosse, and, it, and it's paying off this evening. Very, very nearly a nice bit of interplay, that, between Georgia and Abby. Just didn't quite stick, but still, Berkhamsted have possession. Come While on, they Berk have that, they will believe. <laughs> They are the digging deep here, you can see they really, really want it. And Georgia is working so hard, she's picked it up. Fantastic pressure. Oh. Off. oh. The opportunity and opened up for Georgia, but we've got a moment here and a yellow card yellow for card. pushing. And Berkhamsted have a big, big opportunity here. Yeah, two yeah. minutes now, player up. How are they going to use it? How are they going to react to that? What is their plan? This is the time that Berkham said could really steal the game. They could run away with it. They've just got to be smart, make good decisions, think about utilising that free player now. Georgia with the ball, gets the shot away and scores. Great, great free position there. Absolutely shot it in the top corner. It kind of dropped in, in fact, from where we're sitting, it, it fell in and um, really well placed. Really great composure, especially after taking a big hit. Um, yeah, she actually shot through some sticks there, didn't she? So I'm not quite sure if it was a bit of a ricochet, but ultimately a goal's a goal and we'll absolutely take that. Top, top of the goal and are we level? Is it five We are more? indeed five apiece Woof. heading into the final minutes of the game. Berkham said really do need to use this yellow card now. Can they use this this free player to put the pressure on, to get an extra goal and then just maintain that score line? Five each. Time counting down. Morton Hall moving up the pitch. They've led for so much of this game. Again, you can tell she's wanting to go on her right. She's wanting to create that space. Can Berko read it? Can they slow that down? Get the ball out? Barnes got it away to Jones, who now gives it back to Barnes, who finds some space. And despite being one down, they just look composed under this um, amount of pressure. It's really impressive from Morton. Berkhamsted chasing them down, two on each player. Attackers are not afraid. Great defence there by Berkhamsted. Really well worked. Uh, can Berkhamsted use this now? Come on. Berkhamsted <laughs> flying up the field, ball is loose, but it's claimed by Berkhamsted just about. Berkhamsted will have possession. You can hear the crowd, they know that there are seconds probably left on this game, they are wanting the goal. B moves it in field, looking for an opening for Gemma, she's had to work hard to keep control of that one, ball is loose again. Stays with Berkhamsted, just about does it. No, Morton Hall might just have it. How big could that be? Ball is still loose. Everyone wants a piece of it. Morton Hall have finally claimed it, and they could have an opportunity here to counter-attack. Forward they go with real purpose and pace. Could this be the game right here? Berkhamsted have done well to just shut that down a little bit, but still an opportunity here. Great save. Great save. Wow, this really is high mouth moments in the final final sort of moments of this game that was unbelievable um, from Kate under that pressure 
she's taking just a moment now to um, take a breath before she offloads but I feel like Berkhamsted probably need to be doing that quite quickly time is definitely ticking we feel here brilliant work from Kate now doing her best Edison impression as she moves the ball forward she might just get it back here that's nice, lovely play great work from, from Kate. Kate composure confidence everything you want to see in a goalie again though it's loose ball oh and Gemma has hustled really well there to get the ball to Ella it's keeping it safe right, here we go Berkhamsted cool under pressure let's make really good decisions Berkhamsted now looking for the opportunity to claim this game what a finish we've got here Ashley has it in hand now moves it to Helena meets a wall of Morton Hall ball loose again so much loose ball in these closing stages the nerves starting to get into the game Morton Hall on the fast break here yeah once again Morton Hall coming and Morton Hall coming out with the ball calm under pressure getting it to Barnes Barnes with the shot I think that Kate managed right to get the save he in on that wants the right side every time I think Berkham said have finally popped onto that and really trying to direct her out of the fan to stop that that shot which is what we just saw then just means that she can't get as much precision on that shot and, ha and allows Kate now to have possession they're really pushing you can see the Berk we can see the Berk the sideline oh, and there we have it another draw Kate went for the big Hail Mary, but while the ball was in the air, the umpire's whistles went. It finishes up here in an epic draw. What a game. What a tense finish. And in the end, honours even. Berkhamsted 5, Morton Hall 5. A fantastic occasion. Absolutely brilliant occasion. Um, what a moment for all of these girls on that pitch. And, and I, I kind of feel like a just result in terms of what we saw uh, from performances from both sides. But Berkhamsted... Berkhamsted clawed it back but just couldn't push through for, a, for an additional goal at the end. No, and I, I agree with Joe. I think what an experience and it's really great to play Morton, to see the quality. It's really just exciting to see the quality of lacrosse that we have um, across the country and what an opportunity for these girls, as you can see them there. They, they worked well as a team, they dug deep and I think especially for those year 11s who haven't had that experience yet, you know what an opportunity to shine in front of a great crowd who are are getting bigger and, and noisier um, but yeah really great to see some fabulous lacrosse on show there certainly was some fabulous lacrosse on show fabulous game a fabulous occasion worth the trip certainly for Morton Hall for Berkhamsted once again a fantastic show here at the Stonex got to stop drawing when you come here though I know we seem to really like a draw but um yeah, She's I'm, lost just, the words. I'm just lost for words. Some fa fantastic play all round, though, for, from both sides. Those big players on each side really stood up to be counted. Both goalkeepers with some exceptional moments. And both teams will have just selected um, a most valuable player or a, or a player of the game from from each side. Um, and now I believe they are exchanging a gift. Um, um, I think it's a nice engraved key ring um, as a memento of the evening for those girls that, that have been able to take the field tonight. A fantastic memento, a fantastic evening. Joe, Charlie, thank you so much for joining us and lending your expert view to my uh, nonsense up here in commentary. All finishes up, Berkhamsted 5, Morton Hall 5. Do stay with us through these adverts because coming up after that, we have the rugby Berkhamsted once again hosting against Denston College. Should be a cracker. We truly do believe there's not a team in the country that can't beat everyone again. All the teams out there who have better time to play against the world cup of centers, but we will turn to the team that matter in terms of how you are with each other around the school, around, around the pitch, around, you know, around where we, where we play football. This year, I think we can make a big
Yeah, I'm on board. I'm still loving it. I've still got the trophy on my desk. I'm really lucky this year. The players have been unbelievable. You know, for me, it's all about culture. That's what's really important. And such a nice culture. And the girls delivered that culture for the whole year. We were 13, so we did to come, including the year 12s. And they're showing the character. It's good that we got to play captain to be like, so that helps. And it's a really fun We believe that belonging to the team or belonging to the school is a huge part of our sporting offer and the relationships and the character education that the pupils receive from that is second to none. In terms of our philosophy for sport, it really comes in three tenets. The first being the participation base. We really firmly believe in having huge numbers of girls and boys representing the school or playing a wide variety of sports. Also though as a school, we do believe in high standards and high performance and that comes much when they're older and we really challenge them to be the best they can be. The third tenant to our vision and the most important probably for boys and girls is to be enjoying and loving their sports and we really do firmly believe that this will actually help them play sport when they're 25, 35 and 45. We're proud of our programme here at Berkhamsted School and the range of um, activities and sports that our pupils have access to. Uh, variety is really key in everything that we do as we aim to offer our pupils exposure to so many sports and we encourage them to play as many sports as they can as we believe that multi-sport athletes are the best athletes. These include HRF or health related fitness, basketball, swimming, gymnastics, dance, squash, and through our extracurricular program, even more excitingly, they are able to participate in sports such as equestrian and skiing. For our boys, we encourage them to participate in sports such as rugby, football, and cricket. And on the girls' side, we have 
lacrosse, netball, girls cricket, alongside boys and girls can access the fives curriculum as well. The girls football program started two years ago and now have, has great links through the school and we're hoping to develop that over the next few years as well. Alongside this we have local academies where girls can play their football outside school and we very much support them on their journey on that. The girls cricket program has also flourished here over the last two years and we now have a specialist head of cricket from a professional background who's running the girls cr cricket pathway which shows how important we see girls cricket as being for the future. And to support our pupils we have access to an incredible range of facilities here at Berkhamsted School. Over the road we have Haslam Field which is home to much of our prep sport. We have Kitchener's Field just beyond the castle which hosts junior football athletics and girls cricket. Here at Chesham Field is a wonderful setting for many of our boys and girls to represent the school each weekend. Up at our King's site we have the Knox Johnston Sports Centre with a 25 metre pool, a fitness suite and an indoor sports hall. At Berkhamsted we very much believe in tailoring for individual needs and we do offer and run a sports scholarship programme alongside a bursary support programme for local and regional athletes who want to take part in our sports. We also have a, an array of partnerships with local and regional academies such as Saracens Rugby, uh, Saracens Mavericks Netball and local and regional universities who support our students on their journey through Berkhamsted School. We are lucky here at Berkhamsted School to have an amazing team of professionals leading the sports provision for our pupils. We have a number of qualified PE teachers who are supported and bolstered by a range of professional coaches who have been involved in the professional game either through playing or coaching at franchise or national level. The staff here are dedicated, driven and passionate but not only about sport but about the well-being of the pupils in their care. We firmly believe there's something very special about sport here at Berkhamsted and we do warmly invite you down to come and see our facilities and what we have on offer in the future. Welcome back to the Stonex Stadium. We've just seen a fantastic game of lacrosse, five all as Berkhamsted hosted Morton Hall. Now attention turns to the rugby as Berkhamsted. Welcome Denston College. And we take a look here at the Berkhamsted starting side. Led in the centres by Sam with Adam alongside. And in the halfbacks, Ollie and Alex as Berkhamsted come charging out onto the field. Hundreds and hundreds of spectators here. Their buses have been arriving in their droves over the last couple of hours. And their players on the field ready to hit some bags ahead of kickoff. And so alongside Sam and Adam in the back line, Ollie and Alexander at half back with Joss, Oscar and Alex in the back three. Up front, Dan, John and Dominic in the front row. Second row, Thomas and Jack. And then in the back row, Toby at eight. And Jack and Gabriel, the vice-captain. In the back row, Douglas, Oliver, Ed, James, Oliver and Stefan on the bench. Richard Pryor is the director of rugby as Denson College make their way onto the field. They are led by number eight, Ned Corrie who is in a back row that's a bit of a commentator's nightmare. It's the twins, the Awusus, Rick and Ricky. In the second row, Charlie Maltas and Ollie Makepeace. And in the front row, Max Bailey, Jamie Longyear and Charlie Collier. Halfbacks, Ollie Booth and the vice-captain, Jed Benson. And in the centres, Tom Pickering and Dom Smith. Back three, Charlie Meads, Charles Worthington and Liam Shon. On the replacements bench, Harry Woolman, Tom Hodder, Will Smith, Eden Maxwell and Harrison Eaton. And head of rugby, newly this year at Denston College, is George Glenn. Moments away from kickoff then, it's been slightly delayed as a result of that lacrosse game overrunning. I'll tell you what, if we get a rugby match, 
like that lacrosse match, we are going to be in for something special. Five all draw in the lacrosse. Could we get something similar here at the Stonex in the rugby? Both sides have some promising, promising players in their lineup. They both have some wonderful old boys in their ranks as well. A number of players. Make sure they're behind. Yeah, yard behind is better than a yard in front. That came from Berkhamstead, Toby Captain. Knight, Tobias Elliott among them. James Rodwell, the former England international, seven star. An old Berkhamstead boy as well. We are just about ready to go. The referee signals to start the game. And Berkhamstead, Saracens under 18 fly half, gets us going. The floodlights are on. The crowd is in, and a huge, huge game of rugby awaits us. Booth sets up for the box kick, high, hanging, right into that box, and the chase is very good indeed. Penalty to Berkhamstead. <laughs> Berkhamstead line out. To the middle they go, but goes over the top. So Denston with an opportunity to clear their lines. Big carry. You're outside. Hughes. No. Good. Well taken by Birkenstead, but then spilled. What a chase from Denston College, and you can tell they are going up for this. There is a huge, huge Birkenstead support. And it looks as though... There's your marks, guys. First scrum, like agreed, OK? Denston College are determined up, to create their own atmosphere with some real physical play. That's your limit. Eight in before the set, please. First scrum of the game. Coach! Bounds! two sides. Going forward. Yeah. One, going some forward. wonderful the front rowers through Thank the you. years. Leave the space. And it's a free kick, Berkhamstead. That ball just goes loose, though. Tidied up, stays in Berkhamstead possession. But again, it's a huge tackle coming in from Denston College. They are so determined here in these opening exchanges. Denston will turn the kick, bounces and may just run out. Quickly taken by Alex, the Saracens fly half. Let him run, let him run. Worth noting that for GDPR reasons, we are just using first names of Bedford players today. Uh, but I'm sure many of you know who Alex, the Saracens under 18 fly half is for Berkhamstead. Short break while well, one of the Birkenstead players gets a little yeah. knock attended to. Nothing that's going to keep him off, though. Yeah. Okay. Time, back on. And time is back on. Ready to play. Free kick, Birkenstead. Tommy throw came in 
from Denston College. And Denston College should be well battle hardened coming into this one. They've played three games, lost two, won one, but the two they've lost are against what for many people's money may well be two of the best in the very in the entire country, Ipswich and Sedbur, who if anyone saw the game between them on Saturday live here on Next Gen 15, they will know exactly what I'm talking about. Those were Denston's opening two games of the season. Hard to get more difficult than that, but it will have them battle-hardened. Mount St Mary's College certainly felt that. Last time out, 27-13 victory for Denston. But Berkhamsted here have ridden some of that strong Berkhamsted, strong Denston defence rather, and have a penalty that they've pumped into the 22 from this scrum. And we just see there the loose head loses his bind. Unfortunate one that for Bailey. Line out claimed by Berkhamsted, but it's loose ball, so they won't be able to set up the mall they originally intended. So Ollie has to just tidy it up. And as these floodlights warm up, it is quite dark out there on the field. You can't quite pick it up on your picture, but the field is very, very dark. Making conditions tricky, but it's another penalty to Berkhamsted. Fantastic play, I think, from Ollie, the scrum half, who got himself over the ball was indeed fantastic, brave work from the scrum half. Plenty of number nines who have got themselves well out the way of that contact situation. Not so this one. By the way, did anyone recently see that video that's been going viral of the scrum half accidentally kicking a conversion over his own post? Extraordinary. They're a funny breed, scrum halves, aren't they? Denston having to defend here. As Berkhamsted break clear from the mall, but it may well have been turned over by Denston. Has indeed poached at the crucial moment by the visiting side. They look to clear their lines through the box from Molly Booth. Alex, that was the other Alex at fullback. Tidies up, but another penalty. Rika Wusu, one of the twins in the back row, getting over the ball. Now, those of you that have been watching schoolboy rugby a long time will remember another set of very famous twins playing in the back row in white and Curry twins for Roundel. Sometimes felt like there were six or seven of them on the field and already it feels like that. The Owusu twins in the back row for Denston College. You've got to be a step though. That's fine. The lineup goes awry though. Lost forward by Red. Not forward. Lost forward by Red. Said, tried to tidy it up. Not Red forward by again White. by Denston and we'll scrum. have a scrum down. Denston College White. ball. Nil nil, seven minutes gone. Let me set it first, okay? I'll step back, yeah. Crouch! Big week of action this for Berkhamstead. Set! A week ago, we had the opening round of the cup. Fantastic 33 19 victory. Come round, guys. Away at Warwick. And of course, this game tonight, sandwiched between them, was a game against Seaford College, in which they fielded a fairly changed up side. Quite an intense week. For the Hertfordshire side. They showed their quality in that one. Thank you. There's Burke instead. Sees the loose ball and they're going to race away for the opening score of the game. It's Alex the fly half who arcs his run towards the post to make the conversion easier. 
pouncing on the loose ball. And it's Berkhamstead that have the early lead. Denston ball from the scrum, tried to pass it out the back, it just caught a stray arm, ball bounced loose. And Alexander got away for the score. Converting his own try. I ought to tell you a fair bit about the quality of this man. That he's been playing fly half for Saracens in the under 18 Academy League. Was a lower sick player last year and now in his upper sick. Despite some of the incredible talents in that back line, including Charlie Bracken, who of course has been tearing up trees. Alexander. Yeah, okay. That's been the man at fly half. That tells you everything about his quality. I'll have a chat with them, but yeah. He slots the conversion to his own try sure behind when you're ready. to give Berkhamstead a 7-0 lead. Mate. Okay, lovely. When you're ready. Denson College. Restart. Stay pulled and keep carrying back. Yeah, all on winger. Let him run. Berkhamstead in possession. Crowd really getting behind them. Stop, stop. Thank you. Here at Saracen Stonex Stadium. And cheering every half a break, this crowd. No right. Berkhamstead. Starting to play without nerves, starting to feel the energy from that crowd as Alex tries to chip that one through, but it sits up perfectly for Liam Sean, the fullback for Denston College, and Liam Sean gets a breakaway try of his own. The bounce of a rugby ball can be so, so cruel one way. And so, so rewarding the other. The chip for half a second looked like it sit perfectly for Berkhamstead. Awesome, but in the end, it sat perfectly for uh, Sean and perfectly for Denston so College. The and Liam Sean had the gas to finish it off. Some Two breakaway break scores. And a try apiece. As Jed Benson, the vice captain, stands over the conversion that will level the game up. Benson lands it. Denston a level. Seven points a feet apiece. Sam, and just break down as well. Okay. Must in be a bit of a game here. Get, yeah, clear a roll. Okay. And hands as well. And hands. If you miss it, leave it. <laughs> Alex kicks long for Berkhamstead. Strong carry from the Denston College hooker, Longyear. And another for his front row partner, Collier. Collier again getting his hands on the front row, getting through a mountain of work here for Denston College. 
Barnes again. Longyear takes it in. Corey, the skipper now. It's hard work for the Denston forwards, this. It looks as though Booth is going to give them some respite as he hangs the box up. Sends it deep to Alexander, who moves it back in field to Alex. Don't go forward, don't go forward, Red! Now you're fine! Waiting underneath it again is Booth. Booth thinks he's spotted some space, and there is a bit of space out there. The ball rolls and rolls and rolls. It's not quite a 50-22, but it's a very handy kick for Denston College. He wanted to take it quickly, but the referee just lets them know it had been touched. That's there, Mark. White Mark. Your white Mark. Thank you. Goes forward by White. No, leave it White. Get out. Still playing a knock-on advantage. Use. Advantage, Berkhamsted for the knock-on. They choose to run it, and they run it big through Thomas. Brother of the fly half. Advantage hard. over! Leave it, leave it, thank you. Berkhamsted trying to get a bit of offloading going. And they get the penalty. Seven, six, roll. As both the Wusu twins are asked to roll clear. Tell you what, they hit hard when they hit as a pair, don't they? They just couldn't quite get away having Seven made right. the hit. It's a really difficult area for game now. You really need the other players around you to decide not to compete when There's you've made a tackle right. and you end up on the Thank wrong you. side. There are times where you simply can't move you to rely on other people Line just to stop Line the contest. Stay as well. Back. instead needing to defend here. Didn't win the line out. Denston still carrying hard. Time Benson. Collier again. Make peace up to the halfway line. No, leave the nine. Thank you. A little slip there, but ball retained for Denston College, who are really starting to get through their phases now. A Wusu in the wide channels. to his twin to Awusu who's getting involved here out the back now Denston using the back line and almost breaking clear through Smith Benson feeds wide here to Meads Breaking clear though, goes Ollie. Ball spilled loose though, back into Denston hands. It's chaotic out there right now. Corey tries to add a bit of straightness, but it's been ripped clear now by Berkhamsted, who get themselves on the attack through Alex. Alex now, past one, past two, gets the offload to Adam. Helter skelter stuff here. Alexander moves it wide, and they're playing with penalty advantage now, Berkhamsted, but they want more than that. They may get more than that. Breaking clear goes Sam, the captain. Berkhamsted have their second. Flowing rugby from one end of the field to the other. And despite the try, the referee still sends the Denston College player to the bin as well. Only make peace. We'll have a few minutes on the sidelines. Berkhamsted will be playing against 14, and Berkhamsted will be playing with at least a 12 7 lead after that Sam try.
and gave Worthington on the outside the hardest of tasks, looking to cover two men on the outside, had to turn the shoulders, and as soon as Sam saw those shoulders turned, he knew the dummy was on and could just pin back the ears, and having played on the wing for the first 15 last year, the inside centre this year knew he'd have the gas to finish it off. Alexander's conversion is good. It's a 14-7 lead for Birkenstead. Sam the scorer. Alexander the converter. And the hosts have the lead. With almost 20 minutes gone. Back quickly. That's fine, get on. The three encouraging them to play on. Yes! Ball's out, ball's out. Ball's out, but Denston get the box kick away. Alexander feeds Alex. Alex just tries to wriggle through a gap, almost succeeds, gets up to the halfway line, but lost the ball forward in the process. Denston College strong. last couple of minutes have been really really good okay keep that picture yeah. for me okay keep rolling again if you have your hands in and you don't get it the first time just whip them out okay. all right make it really clear okay so they'll have to go the same yeah guys you'll go have to go down to seven denston college just had a couple of running repairs going but everyone's back on their can, feet as as you start starting yeah. the scrum referee just reminding berkhamstead that they'll have to have we got Scrum with seven. Turn back on. Denston College. There's a mark. Still have an eight piece in the bin. Of course, this being no, under 18s in. rugby. Do you have to match the numbers in the scrum? One it's got to be 77, boys. Yeah, it's a push. Yeah. Second row went off. I'm ready to get back underway. Denston College scrum. They trail Berkhamstead, 14 points to seven. Set. That's Booth, feeds the scrum. It's a big scrum from Denson College. And Berkhamstead, rather, such, such a big scrum. They hooked it against the head. Brilliant work from the Berkhamstead forwards. Penalty advantage. And now they play with penalty advantage from the high tackle as Alexander feeds his centres and now Sam bursts into Denston territory and then the ball is spilt off forward and will come back Seven. High for a penalty on the halfway line. So we're, we're back where we started a couple of minutes ago, except this time it's Berkhamstead with the put in. Free kick to Berkhamstead. In fact, a penalty. I was just about to say that's the second one. The referee 
remembers it was as well and turns it into a full penalty. Berkhamstead go quickly from it and they make good ground. And forwards get on the carry. Sam wants to stretch his legs again, fields it back in. Fast ball this for Berkhamstead. Can they do something with it? Trying to buy a cheap penalty. Referee not having it, but Berkhamstead may not need it. Going close, but then over the ball was Jamie Longyear. A big carry from Dan. And in fact, it wasn't long yet. It was Ollie Booth, the scrum half, getting over the ball. That is brilliant work from the scrum half. That's turnovers for both scrum halves we've seen. Really embodying the determination that their sides are playing with here at the Stonex Stadium. Ball stolen by Berkhamstead and they'll look to try and create something out wide here but lost forward, chance for Denston to counter, they go to ground. They're still going to look to play. But nothing coming from it so we'll come back for that knock on. Keep that space, okay? We've had two. Second, yeah, but you've had two against your side, okay? Just get, step up a little bit closer. Thank you. Keep that gap. We've asked for ear to ear. Coach! Bind! Set! Stay nine! Hold! Thank you! Run, Dink run. over the top from Smith, claimed in the backfield. Down Berkhamstead's left wing, Josh, who's into the 22, and there could be space here on the outside. They give the final part. Denston College scramble is the equal of the Berkhamstead attack at the moment. No, no, six! He's never on the ball. Seven, thank you. Berkhamstead still plugging away, Alexander feeds his forwards outside him, it's a bit narrower at the moment. No, 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 no! Slow ball, still stays on the Berkhamstead side, that's clever play as Sam goes close. No, 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 you're off your feet! Loose ball, but it's just about tidied up on the Berkhamstead side by Dan, the loose head, and now breaking around the right-hand side they go. Through Adam, back through Alex, the fullback. He did so well to find a way to get that ball down. Almost upside down by the time he finished it off. finish again it was yeah. well tidied up by Dan the loose head it was good finish. Right, and then finish. Alex with some great footwork to get up to the line but look at this Awusu puts him under all kinds of pressure but somehow some way Alex nice finds swing. a way to get the ball down and stretches it out to a 19-7 lead for Berkhamstead Alexander with the conversion opportunity, it is a really tough one. But his side have scored three tries inside of 27 well, first half minutes. Well in the last. It. 
the touchline conversion. It's a good strike, but just pushes it left. Stays at 19-7, but Alex, the fullback, with a score that puts a bit of daylight between the two sides. And crucially, means that Berkhamstead did manage to get a try during that yellow card period. And now, Dixon College are back up to 15 men, or they will be. Once make peace realizes that he's allowed back on again. There he is. He's just trotting on now. Get the timing right next time, all right? Yeah, no worries. When you're ready, make so, sure behind. Back to 15 players apiece. Yeah. Berkhamstead leading. 19-7. It's a deep kick from Berkham from Denston rather, which allows Berkhamstead to send a booming clearing kick. Up and rolling into the 22, Ollie Booth is back there. Don't go forward, get out! Get out! Denston clear. Play your fight now. To Birkenstead territory, but it's well kept in by Alexander. And now Alex hangs one high. And it might just drop in tricky fashion here for Booth. It was tricky, he had to come sliding in. Did really well to get to it, but just couldn't quite hang on to it. Just have a look at this from Alexander. Ball is bouncing towards the touchline. He realises he's about to go out just ever so well to keep that in. And in the end, it's given his side a decent net gain here and an attacking chance from the scrum. Burned! Set! Far side. Far side. Let's get that stability, okay, before the set. Get our heads in place, get our binds. Let's be stable, please. Okay, no movement before the set. Can you find your, your distance, okay? All over the sides. It's time. just there as a guide. Crouch! Bind! Set! Keep it up, keep it up. Get away from him now. Okay. Scrum again on Berkhamstead. So it's it's fine. To Alexander and they move it wide and there could be an opening here. There could really be an opening here. Adam is away. Four tries for Berkhamstead. Both centres on the score sheet. A brilliant move off the set piece from Berkhamstead. The right to left wheel on the scrum just took the back row out of the equation. And then Sam out the back door to Alexander. And in fact, it was his fullback Alex that he fed on the outside arc. Two tries in as many minutes, really, for the fullback. Step or look, or get, look good on TV. <coughs> and as the referee says, that step will look good on TV. It certainly does. I'm guessing so. Two lovely moments. From the Berkhamstead fullback Alex. First of all, that magical bit of finishing for his first. And then the lovely step and outside swerve for his second score and his side's fourth. After that incredibly intense and physical and impressive start from Denston College, it's been Berkhamstead that have made the running of this game. And a brilliant touchline conversion, was it? Well, no, it wasn't. The cheers went up from the crowds. They almost, they almost convinced me of the conversion. The referee was not convinced. Either way, it's a 24-7 lead for Berkhamstead. Alex with two scores from fullback, two wonderful scores. Kickoff doesn't quite go right for the home side though. Denston almost getting control of it, but Burke instead of just about wrestled control back. And we'll kick long. It's a pretty decent touch finder given the angle. Denston just had half a thought of going quickly. There's your mark. In the end, decide against right, set it. The gap. Just a yard off the 22, guys. A yard off the 22. Harry Woolman 
is on for Denston College. That's the limit. So to Tom Hodder. Good. Loose ball. On top of that line out ball though, and then offside. From Denston Lost College forward. means a penalty. Berkhamstead. You're in front. Lost Berkhamstead in really front. are making life difficult Lost for the visitors now. He's offside. Oh, Get in the chaser. There's a mark. Lost forward, then offside. Oh, bloody. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put the line to the middle, yeah? Lovely. No. That's yours, yeah. Competition's good, lost forward by Good competition at the line out from Denston College. Forces the knock on from Berkhamstead. Good intervention there from Makepeace. Competition's good, lost forward by the red. Scrum. Keep our standards, guys, OK? Last one was good. Keep that height and stability, please. Second. Bound. Set. Use, use. Thank you. Denston. Lost forward. Can't quite get that one to stick. Try to run that fly half to wing a move that we see so often at the top end of the game. Berkhamstead had possession just passed behind the man, so we'll come back for the scrum. In fact, we won't because it's half time. And what a first half from Berkhamstead. It was a really big physical opening to the game. Both sides exchanged breakaway scores, but since then, Berkhamstead have roared away to a 24 7 half time lead. This is going, I've been teaching all day. We truly do believe there's not a team in the country we can't beat if we're on our game. There'll be teams out there who have better technical players than us but don't have the same team spirit that we do. In terms of the team dynamic, in terms of how we are with each other,
Ned. Welcome up? back to the Stonex Stadium. Bye, Captain. Thank you. Berkhamsted against Denston College, and Berkhamsted have flown out of the traps in the first half for a 24-7 lead. What can Denston College do about it? They're playing in white from left to right. Berkhamsted just about claiming that restart. But no, it's fallen on the Denston College side. Berkhamsted hosting here in their maroon and blue hoops. 24-7 they lead, but Denston College. Looking to strike back early in this second half. Penalty advantage white against 20 red. They've made a few changes. Denston will run you through those. Once we've matched them up, a Wusu with a big carry. Two twins stood out in that first half, and they're going close here. Step. Penalty advantage against Playing with penalty advantage. Oh, Denston College. This could be a big start to the second half if they can get across the line. Benson puts it out the back. That's a really, really important tackle from Berkhamsted. 18 red. Oh, what a crucial tackle that was. By Would have been a definite score otherwise. As Corey goes quickly, but Ned, it's going to be pulled back. Must leave your hands. By the referee. Okay, must leave your hands. So either put it down and tap it. Okay. Corey, the skipper, goes close. He just short. Still short. Denston College. How they managed to stop Corey from going over there, I'll never know. Awusu goes close, Awusu goes over. Rick Awusu, the blind side, drives over from close range. Corey went close. Awusu gets over, and that is the start that Denson College needed. Berkhamstead, close defence, was impressive. Verse 20. 20. You were fine, but then you played him. able to power over. And a decent conversion as well from Jed Benson. Well, he's in front of the sticks, Thank I suppose. You. Make sure they're behind, please. Decent in the context of the game. Because it brings it to within 10 points. 24-14. Denston College trail their host Berkhamstead. Ball is out! Ball is out! Sean is not on! Eden Maxwell is on at scrum half and gets that 50, box kick option. away. 50-22 is on, says the referee. He may not need it. Oh, a bit of magic. <laughs> Berkhamstead respond. Oliver with the score. They went for the 50-22 kick, but instead of bouncing out, it stayed in field. And Berkhamstead strike back. Alexander went for the 50-22. Now, is there a question of whether the player was in front of the kicker? Perhaps we'll never know. But what was important was when that ball sat up and stayed in field, Oliver was there to finish it off. And no sooner had Denston narrowed the gap than Berkhamstead widened it back out again. Conversion doesn't quite go. But Oliver's try puts his side into a 29-14 lead. What a start to the second half. Tries for both sides. Back 
Lucas by White. Lost forward by Red. Scrum advantage, White. Denston playing the scrum advantage. Penalty advantage, yes. White. Fast starts the second half continue. It may well do because Denston have Red. penalty advantage here and charging through goes Tom Pickering. He's one to look out for. A Wusu carries now. Ball is ripped clear, but we'll come back for the penalty. Six offside. Six red offside. And it looks as though the vice captain Benson is going to look to the corner. Indeed, he does. That is a fantastic kick towards that corner as well from a long way out. He's taken that to within six metres of the Berkhamsted try line. The referee doing as, as all referees do in using the line. Use the line, use the line. To Thank set you. up the line out. What can Denson College do here? Well, they do the first part right. Charlie Maltas brings the ball down. And the ball moves, and the ball is surging towards the line. Denston College have their third try. Benson's kick into the corner, set the platform up for his forwards pack to pounce upon. Maltas brought the ball down safely. And then I think it might have been Harry Woolman getting his hands on the ball at the back of that mall. And as his forward pack surged over the line. Woolman was there. To get the score. Ten. Just your winger last time. Your winger last time just came to give a yard. Lovely. Smart. Oh, conversion good from Benson as well. Show on! Use! Stay, stay there! No, you're fine. To an eight point game here. Denston College stepped up here in the second half. Birkenstead countered the previous try very quickly. What can they do in the face of that latest Denston College score? This man, Alexander at fly half, might have something to say about it. So hard to bring down there. That's fine. A big carry now. Forward, scrum lost forward. Scrum advantage, White. Just as they Who's were building there? a bit of momentum. Denston College now have the ball. Release, Sam. Thank you. Still got scrum advantage, guys. <laughs> advantage over. Maxwell clips it over, and just as he did so, the referee called advantage over. And as the ball went straight out, there's your mark white. So it will be a Berkhamsted line out. Unfortunate one, that one for Denston College. Just one of those where just two yards off the referee. You'll get that advantage over. You pull the trigger. Hold ten. Berkhamsted line out. They've set up here in the back line with real depth, and no surprise then they go off the top from that line out. Big carry, first of all, through the midfield and the forward pack up almost to the 10 metre line. Now they come back against the grain on the blind side, and again it's a good carry. They find a bit of space, but then a loose ball off the floor just allows Denston to swarm around the ball in defence. No, 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 no. Stay. Thank you. So Berkhamsted. Slightly have to restart. Only really difficult to get clean ball at the base of the breakdown at the moment. Denston College back row making life pretty tough back there. Thank you, very good, right. 
This one a little tidier, a little slower as well. Good carry there from Jack in the second row. Alexander now feeds his runners outside him. Alexander, could there be a little bit of space out here if they can get the offload away? There might be into the hands of Alex. Alex Hattrick hunting. Just gets hauled down inside the 22. But this is good from Berkhamstead, really good. Inside the 22. Alexander out the back to Sam, the skipper. Sharp tackling from Denston College and sharp work on the floor from Rick Owusu. Got his hands on the ball, got a clean rip. And Berkhamstead were holding on. Did really well to bounce back to his feet, get hands on. Okay, we just sharp on the whistle. Just have a quick break on oh, Berkhamstead. Make a change. Give us a chance to just quickly mention our kit suppliers, Limitless, who've been fantastic partners over the course of the last year or so. And as temperatures drop here in the stadium, they're doing a very good job of keeping us warm. We'll check out Limitless Kit to see what they've got to offer. For Thank you. you. Your there's your mark. Thank you. Keep it on you. Ned, keep working on that offside line, please. Say, I recommend the okay. touchline jacket. Doing a fine job of keeping us warm as the wind picks up here at the Stonex Stadium. Denston College off the line out, poached here, and Berkhamstead with another chance after a promising attacking phase previously to try and launch something. To have a lot of numbers at the breakdown though, because Denston are making life so difficult at that breakdown. This is a good carry though to get them across the game line. And now surging through goes Sam. He's got to try to his name already. This time he gives a pass, but the pass just drifted forward. Just forward. But Berkhamstead are threatening here. Another lovely break from Sam after the delayed pass from Alexander. Just as he looked to draw and give, it just drifted forward on him. direct off that scrum. Shoulder on, thank you, use, hold, hold, good. Maxwell has his kick charged but gets down to tidy it up. No, Berkhamstead emerged with it though. <laughs> Corey makes life difficult there for Berkhamstead but they still keep possession, Dominic this time going into contact. Leave it, leave it, leave it, oh God. Loose ball, but seized upon by Sam. Sam still going, good footwork from the skipper. Then he's driven back by Owusu. And again, another big, big tackle coming through. Denston are making life so difficult here. Still though, Berkhamstead plug away, Dominic carrying once more. That's a good carry, but the ball is loose. And Ricky Owusu now breaks clear. The powerful Denston College defence getting its rewards. 20 minutes to go. We have got a real game on our hands here. Only eight points between them. Denston really have stepped up in this second half. Berkhamstead. Finding life difficult at the breakdown at the moment, but finding space with that kick. Seizing upon it though goes Liam Sean. He's already got one wonder try to his name. This time he gets the pass away to Worthington. Pickering bounces off a defender. 
And still going is Pickering across the 10 meter line, Pickering. Loose ball though. Seized upon by Maxwell. But seized upon, I apologise, by Oliver. So six and seven are increasingly infringing. Okay, they must roll clear. Okay, yeah, they, once they made the tackle, they must roll. Okay, and then their hands are in also after. Six and seven particularly. Okay, have a chat. I'll give you time. Thank you. Three, just asking. Time's off anyway. To have a word with the Awusu twins about infringements. I wonder if that's because he can't tell which one's which. A bit of a break here while Corey has a word with his team and a couple of running repairs are taken care of. A little chance to remind you of what's coming up this weekend here on Next Gen 15. Four live streams on Saturday and four absolute crackers. And it all starts at 1 o'clock over at Marlborough College when they welcome Eton College. It's actually a 3 o'clock kickoff in the first team fixture, but there's a little <laughs> curtain raiser, an old boys game between the old Marlboroughs. So do check that one out from 1 o'clock. The first team game against Eton College will kick off at 3 o'clock. Also at 3 o'clock, the 200 years of rugby football okay, celebrations up, continue at rugby school when they host Stowe. That one should be an absolute cracker. It's been a long, long time since Stowe won at rugby. Could they manage to do that this weekend? And there are also two 2.30 kickoffs. Hayley Bree against Aundel. And an absolute cracker on the schoolboy scene. Millfield against Wellington College. Take your pick between the four. Watch them all back to back. They're all available. They'll all be available for as long as you want them to do. Check all four of those out because they are going to be absolute. Use the line. Line is good. Yeah, hold I'll tell you what, we're in a bit of a game here as well at the Stonex as we get hold, back hold underway. Good. Thank you. Berkhamstead in there. Maroon and blue hoops leading Denston in white. 29-21. Roared out of the traps to a 24-7 half-time lead, but Denston College have been superb in this second half, particularly in defence. Berkhamstead would love another score just to make this feel a little bit more comfortable. Again, it's a difficult ball at the back of the ruck. And the Owusu twins really are making life difficult at the breakdown at the moment. And it's not just the Owusus. Max Bailey getting over the ball that time, the loose head prop, earning the penalty for the visitors here. In fact, it may even have been the number 17 there, Tom Hodder, getting over it. There's your mark. Stonex starting to find real voice in support of their sides. They've been arriving by the bus load since about 4.30 this afternoon. Set! Nine, leaving the load. Balls out. Stefan moves the ball away from the scrum. And they get it all the way out here to Oscar. He's moved from right to left wing and now Alex who tries to his name already, but it's Rika Rusu again over the ball. Oh, what an influence these Awusu twins are having. Six is it was good ball. play from Berkhamstead. Just look at this from Awusu. Gets himself just about behind the back foot. Thank you. Earns his side the penalty. Reggie's the edge of the line.
Give a big yard. Give a big yard. Thank you. Stay as well. Hold, hold. Denston darts are straight this time. Launch their attack, and that's nice play, and they get across the game line. Thank you. He's got to move. Thank you. Berkhamstead could have did a good job of slowing it down, but breaking around the corner. Went Maxwell, and now they still fly through from Ruizu. Playing with advantage now, Denston College. Long year carries in. Six. Collier. Collier still going. Collier across the line. What a turnaround this has been in the second half from Denston College. They move to within two points and they move a player clear as well. Gabriel, the Saracens player and vice captain, receives a yellow card for Berkhamstead. No, 26, 29. As Collier goes across. Who did your maths? for Denston College's fourth try. Exactly. And this conversion from Benson would leave us in a one-point game. Just goes wide, but we are still in a tight old game here. 15 minutes left to go, and that Charlie Collier Try for Denston College. He's narrowed things to just Bruce three Sam, points. Sam. No option, clear line break. He slowed it up. Okay, for number six. Who are you coming on for? 26 29. To you. Time is off, just wait a second. What a turnaround this has been from Denston College. 24-7 down they were at half-time. 29-26, they now trail. Lovely. When you're ready. Fine, competition's good. Curry there. Shoulder on, shoulder on. The Denston College captain carrying and carrying hard. Owusu tries to find his brother, just comes forward as he tries to offload it. Berkhamstead will have the scrum. It's Ricky Owusu this time, tried to get the offload away, may actually have come off a Berkhamstead hand, but difficult one to spot. We'll have a Berkhamstead scrum. You go standards, please. Boys, it must be seven against seven. One of you must drop. Thank you. The referee just explaining once again that it needs to be seven against seven. And the opposition are a man down in the pack. Set! For safety reasons at under 18 level. Good. Tidy scrum ball for Berkhamstead. Alexander sticks boot to ball. 50 22 is on, and that's going to roll very, very close. It had to be claimed by Sean in the backfield. Well, the 50-22 was happening for Berkhamstead. And Denston looked to make the clearance, but it was touched. Could be a counter-attacking chance. Brilliantly held on to there by Berkhamstead. I don't know how they held on to that without knocking it forward. No, 17! Now they look to get some sort of attacking platform. They need to work hard at the breakdown. Big shot comes in there. Ball will be in Denston College hands. Oh, the defence in this second half has just been something else. Coddick with the big carry there. Harrison Eaton is on. Huge tackle coming in from Berkhamstead. They needed that there. 
Benson. A little bit of space. Berkhamstead scramble well and scramble to send the Denson College man into touch. And they'll have the line out. There's your mark, White. Fantastic tackle Four in the, the midfield here. Four? Oh no, sorry, five. I'll give you a chance. Berkhamstead did really well to bring him down safely as well. Absolutely textbook. Ball is poached the line out by Denson College. And this could be a real opportunity. They're on the 22 here. The visitors. Tails up, they might just fancy for the first time in the game having a sniff at the lead. A Wusu certainly fancies it. No, you're not on the ball, son. Oh. Eaton there just running into the referee. No, don't come in there, 18. 18, get out. Marcus. Marcus, rather. Play scrum hard. Eaton back on his feet. Pickering. Maltas. Strong carry from the second row. Corey. Corey. Eaton has another dart around the fringe. This is good from Denson College. Still they go on. A Wusu. Fighting and scrapping for every inch, and now they're just a yard short. The left hand side they go, fast hands, and they're across. They are indeed. Corey gets over, but the referee awards the penalty try. A high tackle prevented the score. It'll be a penalty try and a yellow card to boot. The conversion won't be necessary. That's awarded naturally. And Denson College, having been 24-7 down at half time, have the lead. Well, what a turnaround from Denston College. At half-time, discussions up here in commentary were about how maybe the road ahead was long for them, how wrong we were. They have come soaring back in this second half. It was Corey that drove over, but the high tackle came in on him. So the penalty try was awarded, seven points with it. And Denston College yes. have a 33-29 lead Just that out. with about got, eight minutes left to play. He's got about 30 seconds. And so for about 30 seconds, Denson College are playing against 13, then Berkhamstead will be back to 14, and they will probably have about a minute at the end of the game, and we're back to 15 aside. I'll try and keep you abreast of all of that as it goes on. But the more salient fact is that Berkhamstead, having been so comfortably in front at half time, find themselves behind and find themselves in need well, the key to unlock this Denston College defence that's been so impressive in the second half and impressive again there as Awusu gets hands on the ball but will come back for the scrum. Eight minutes left to play, says the referee. Eight. And what a blockbuster eight minutes it could be. Seven. Referee has in fact revised how long is left to match our match block. It's always good when we're the ones that have it right. Yeah. 
just a moment of calm after the drive. Instead of back up to 14. Angle first in, 17. Not the penalty, much needed penalty here. 17 angle, straight in. Alexander will just prod this one as close to the corner as he can get from that angle. That's a pretty decent effort. Eight meters out. Focus on you, yeah? Not him. Thank you. That's yours. Yeah, keep our hips, yeah? It can never cease to amuse me watching referees try to make marks on an artificial surface. But every time they do try it. Crucial line out this for Birkenstead. They need something to turn the tide here. And they do the first part of the job. Line out complete. They set them all up. It's defended well initially by Denston College, so they break clear, but all over it again is Arusa, just about they managed to get it away. But it's difficult, scrappy ball, and now hacking clear go Denston College, that's really well covered by Alexander, but I think he might have just hurt himself a little bit in the process, a little bit of cramp, I think. Denston College clear, these Arusu boys just causing carnage at the breakdown. So Berkhamstead have to look to counter. They may actually find there's a bit of space out here. Sam's pass moves out wide to Oliver. He's got a try already to his name. How's that one going to bounce? It's going to bounce very nicely indeed. Sam puts the score in. Berkhamstead go back in front. The captain with the try. The coaches on the sideline just try to urge a bit of calm. But you try and keep these boys and this crowd calm. The captain steps up. It was his pass out to Oliver. There you are. Who just That's dinked the, the ball over. And the ball, just the bounce on. of that Thank ball, you. we saw it in the first half. Come on for the Liam Shon try okay, and we see it again Five in the second the half here for Sam the skipper to pounce and put his side back in the lead 34 points to 33 conversion to come oh what a game we have here at the Stonex. it just never fails to deliver here Alexander's conversion has the length, doesn't quite have the line. So it's a one-point game. Three and a half minutes left to play, two minutes left on the yellow card. And Sam, the skipper, has put his side back in front. And Sean kicks deep into the 22. Berk instead return. Fine touch. And it'll be a Denston College line-up on the 10-metre line. Meter line. Uh, we've got four. There's your mark. Four to go. On your front line, gents. Use the line, that's good for you. That's good, that's good. Denson go off the top, no one there, but they tidy it up nonetheless. Ball squirts out of that ruck, I'm not sure quite how, but it squirts out on the Berkhamstead side. It has been such a fierce contest. Every time the ball has hit the deck, particularly in this second half. Berkhamstead across halfway. Goes backwards. Denston all over it at the breakdown, though. And they go quickly with the penalty from Maxwell. Pickering feeds it out to Collier, who's got a try already. Fancies another. Rumbles up to the 22. Thank you, very good. 
Big tackle coming in. Stay, stay, stay. Get out. Thank you. From Gabriel. The Berkhamstead blindside. Who plays his academy referee with Saracens. Benson, that's a nice offload. Ball just loose. Denston retain possession though. Surely there's not another twist in this game. Codder. Collier. Tries the offload, just about gets it to work. Maxwell has it now. Penalty, Denston College. Denston half thinking about going quick, but surely, surely they're going to go to the corner again and use that ball. I'll just check to make sure. 34 33. Yellow card has come back on. Referee just double checks the score. It is 34 33. And in fact, they're not going to go for the corner. Jed Benson is going to go for the post. Thank you. Referee says there will be time for one more play after the kick. Yellow card comes back on. Yeah, thank you, sir. Benson. Make sure you tap. With a potential match-winning opportunity for Denston College here. Who would have thought we could say that at half-time? <laughs> Connection's good. Benson lands the kick. One minute left to play. Denston College lead 36 34. What a game. Jed Benson. With real guts to land that kick. Took the responsibility himself, made the decision and nailed the kick, ball is out from that ruck, Denson College have to be sharp about it, they're going to try and play this minute out, and they're going to need to play with a bit of control here, and they've got to be careful not to dive over at any of these rucks, the referee will be looking step, for step, it, Corey the skipper takes that one in and that's exactly what we were talking about, straight off their feet, Berkhamstead have the penalty, You see it here. Corey took it in and just straight off their feet and their desperation to make sure that ball was retained. And Berkhamstead pumped it into the corner. And what a kick that is from Alexander. Around about eight metres out. And an opportunity here with the clock in the red for Berkhamstead to steal this one at the death from Denston College. They get the line out right, the ball sets up. Ball in the hands of Douglas at the tail, he breaks off, they go direct through Adam. He's brought down. Dan now, Dan still going, Dan across the line, no he's just short. They go blind, Sam the skipper on a hat-trick. Well tackled by Denston College. Hand says the ref. Berkhamstead trying to batter their way over the line. At the moment, the defence equal to it. Is there some space out wide? Might be a little bit. Tackle comes in. That's good from Benson. Still, the ball is alive though. Owusu's over it. No hands again, says the referee though. Is that ball loose? No. Oh, looked like it might have been. In goes Thomas now. Thomas still going. Thomas is brought down. Jack now. Alexander back inside. Huge tackle from Denston College. Discipline is everything here for the visitors. Berkham said the host, searching for the winning score. Adam now joins in the forward fun. Alexander. Takes it on himself. Half through. Alex. 
Alex on a hat trick. Alex, Alex still going. Oh. Still, Berkhamstead search. They go blind. Is there a bit of space? Not quite. Ollie to Thomas. Berkhamstead through Sam. Sam the skipper dancing. Wrapped up. Now they move wide. Could there be a bit of space? Alex. Great tackle around the ankles on him. Could there be some space? There might be a chance here. He's got himself. And Berkhamstead got the try. Douglas it was. Gets across the line. Referee hasn't seen anything. He's going to blow the final whistle here and Denston College are going to be the ones celebrating. Berkhamstead were across the line. He's not going to award it. Referee hasn't seen the grounding. Denston College are going to come away here with a famous victory. Unless there's a penalty being called earlier. I've got no ball on ground. He's not independent. Okay, I can't accept it. I haven't got it. Okay. If he wants to show that, no, I haven't got it, guys. Okay. Have you got the shot? Let me see it. Boys, no, no, no. Well, he's Thank going you, to the cameraman. Oh my word. He's going to the photographer to find out if this is a score or not. Oh my goodness me, have you ever seen anything this like this? This is a bit like some TV, isn't it? Yeah, so he's got the ball, he's going for three. Well, this referee knows how to build the drama, he awards the try! I've got a clear ground, big moment. Can you have a look at that? Jerry McManus, the photographer on the touchline. I haven't got anything for a clear knock on. Okay, he's the man of the hour. I've got a clear ground on the camera. The replacement hooker. No, I haven't got a clear ground on the camera. Gets the score in the end, and Berkhamstead win it at the death. Oh my goodness, have you ever seen drama like this in a game of schools rugby? We've seen late finishes, we've seen last play scores, we've seen them this season, but have you ever, ever seen a finish quite like that, decided by the shot on Jerry McManus's camera? Well, here's what we saw. Let's look back at it. I thought I saw a grounding. Berkhamstead had been so, so patient in attack. Douglas went on the charge, got across the line. He does look like he's going to have got that down, doesn't he? He does look like he's got that down. The celebrations went up. Referee just reminding the players that there's actually still a conversion to be taken. I suppose it doesn't really matter. Both players are pretty much off the field. As uh, Alexander, the Saracens fly half, goes herring after it and thinks, well, I might as well add to my own uh, personal stats here. In fact, it might be Alex, the fullback. So, uh, for the sake of dotting I's and crossing T's, we may as well watch Alex take this conversion. But my goodness me, well, hats off to the referee for staying so calm there. Conversion doesn't go. Not that it mattered too much anyway. What a dramatic finish. What an incredible, incredible game of rugby that finishes 39-36 in Denston College's favour. Oh, no, I don't think I've ever seen anything like it. As I say, absolutely hats off to the referee for staying so incredibly calm there, for realising that he had a resource that he could use in the form of Jerry McManus's camera. He was right not to take the word of the touch judge who wasn't independent but he was right as well to use the resources he had available 
And well, if you want that match winning moment, do head over to Joe McManus Photography, I suppose. He's the one that has it as Berkhamstead head over to their adoring fans on the far side. They thought they'd lost it with that late, late Jed Benson penalty. But Douglas, the Berkhamstead replacement, gives Richard Pryor's side the victory at the last. It looked as though there was going to be a grounding, didn't it? As he powered between the two defenders and he, he'd nudged his upper torso ahead of both of them as they crossed the line. And that is some way to finish a game of rugby. School's rugby, boy, it just keeps delivering, doesn't it? From that stunning Tom Bowen finished for Clifton College the other night at the death. So that incredible Sedba comeback that nearly nicked it against Ipswich and Ipswich's famous victory at the weekend to Douglas's score right at the end of the game here. Schoolboy rugby just delivers and delivers and delivers. A famous victory here for Berkhamstead. And credit to Denston. They look down and out at half time, 24 7 down. They put themselves in a position at 36 34 up with less than a minute to play through that Benson penalty to win the game and having been down and out in such a manner at half time to just be in that position is worthy of credit they were defensively so good and even in that final phase of play they were defensively so good to hold Berkhamstead out for so long but in the end Berkhamstead showed patience showed character and showed the real spirit of schools rugby to find a way across the line what a finish what a game of rugby all finishes up Berkhamstead 39 Denston College 36 stay with us over the weekend four games coming up for you on Saturday as I'm sure you need no reminding Marlborough College against Eton College three o'clock same time rugby school against Stowe at three o'clock and two 230 kickoffs Haylebury against Aundel and Millfield against Wellington College. I don't know if any of them will match the drama of this evening, but if they come close, we'll be pretty lucky anyway. Full time, Berkhamstead 39, Denston College 36. Thank you very much for staying with us. We truly do believe there's not a team in the country we can't beat if we're on our game. There'll be teams out there who have better technical players than us, but don't have the same team spirit that we do. In terms
yeah, a month on. I'm still loving it. I've still got the trophy on my desk. I'm really lucky this year. The players have been unbelievable. You know, for me, it's all about culture. That's what's really important and setting that culture. And the girls delivered that culture the whole year. The year 13s who really took on leading the year 12s. And yeah, showing that character. It's good that me and Gaz are co-captains because we're really good friends, so that helps. And it's been really fun captaining, especially being all the way from the seven and half. I think it's been amazing to be captain, especially co-captains with ours. And I don't think we really knew how much we could achieve. Like, we knew we were a really good team, but it was just amazing to be able to prove it to everyone. We take part in three competitions, and obviously being crowned double champions is just absolutely incredible. We started the season with county um, tournament and we won that winning all of our games which then meant we could go through to regionals and then we also won that having won all our games at the tournament which meant we only just qualified for nationals from that so it's already been such a big achievement having qualified for nationals. Well we went into nationals we kind of just wanted to make it further than we did last year because last year we didn't even make it out of the round. They're so resilient which I'm really really proud of particularly after they had a defeat against uh, Millfield and then they had to come back again and play them in the quarterfinals. Um, losing by one goal is, is tough in a, in a netball game. Um, everyone managed to lift their spirits after losing um, and as a captain it was so great to see everyone still be so happy and enthusiastic knowing that we can still do so well even though we lost the game. We made it through to the semis we were already like this is better, like, this is amazing. We still couldn't believe we won the nationals. I just remember that day just smiling, I just couldn't even believe that we'd done it and then to go into another semi and then a final literally the following day, it was amazing and to win again, just couldn't believe it. The energy was just so high, especially with everyone watching, like on live stream and then also people were like all the parents in the crowd running in after we won, it was just really nice. I'm so proud, it's been such a long season to be able to keep improving and improving throughout the whole entire season and then achieve what we did, um, I couldn't be more proud of the girls. With the Cups, both the Cups, the Ice and Sea Cup even making it as far as we did and then in the SNS when we won it, that was amazing as well. That re the resilience they've shown and I think, you know, shows what we do at a school in, in developing remarkable people. These girls are, are remarkable athletes. The four of them don't even play club and have never played club within this team so it just shows, you know, the importance of homegrown talent and you know getting that culture right. But to be able to finish it off on such a high like this and obviously develop so much since I was in year seven just looking up at the big girls and thinking oh my god you know they look so good to be standing here now it just feels amazing. I think I'm most proud that it's at under 19 level because if you look at the banners behind me we have only really achieved it at under 14 level and below. It is massive yeah double champions absolutely incredible. Welcome to a beautiful day. My name is Tom Pearce and I'm the Director of Sport at Berkhamstead School. And my name is Katie Costin and I'm the Assistant Director of Sport at Berkhamstead School. Sport at Berkhamstead is very much about developing remarkable people. And here at Berkhamstead, we believe that belonging to the team or belonging to the school is a huge part of our sporting offer. And the relationships and the character education that the pupils receive from that is second to none. In terms of our philosophy for sport, it really comes in three tenets. The first being the participation base. We really firmly believe in having huge numbers of girls and boys representing the school or playing a wide variety of sports. Also though as a school, we do believe in high standards and high performance. And that comes much when they're older and we really challenge them to be the best they can be. The third tenant to our vision, and the most important probably for boys and girls, is to be enjoying and loving their sports. And we really do firmly believe that this will actually help them play sport when they're 25, 35 and 45. We're proud of our programme here at Berkhamstead School and the range of um, activities and sports that our pupils have access to. Uh, variety is really key in everything that we do as we aim to offer our pupils exposure to so many sports and we encourage them to play as many sports as they can as we believe that multi-sport athletes are the best athletes. These include HRF or health related fitness, basketball, swimming, gymnastics, dance, squash and through our extracurricular programme even more excitingly they are able to participate in sports such as equestrian and skiing. For our boys we encourage them to participate in sports such as rugby, football and cricket. And on the girls side we have 
lacrosse, netball, girls cricket, alongside boys and girls can access the FIVES curriculum as well. The girls football programme started two years ago and now have, has great links through the school and we're hoping to develop that over the next few years as well. Alongside this we have local academies where girls can play their football outside school and we very much support them on their journey on that. The girls cricket programme has also flourished here over the last two years and we now have a specialist head of cricket from a professional background who's running the girls cr cricket pathway which shows how important we see girls cricket as being for the future. And to support our pupils we have access to an incredible range of facilities here at Berkhamsted School. Over the road we have Haslam Field which is home to much of our prep sports. We have Kitchener's Field just beyond the castle which hosts junior football, athletics and girls cricket. Here at Chesham Field is a wonderful setting for many of our boys and girls to represent the school each weekend. Up at our King's site we have the Knox Johnston Sports Centre with a 25 metre pool, a fitness suite and an indoor sports hall. At Berkhamsted we very much believe in tailoring for individual needs and we do offer and run a sports scholarship programme alongside a bursary support programme for local and regional athletes who want to take part in our sports. We also have a, an array of partnerships with local and regional academies such as Saracens Rugby, uh, Saracens Mavericks Netball and local and regional universities who support our students on their journey through Berkhamsted School. We are lucky here at Berkhamsted School to have an amazing team of professionals leading the sports provision for our pupils. We have a number of qualified PE teachers who are supported and bolstered by a range of professional coaches who have been involved in the professional game either through playing or coaching at franchise or national level. The staff here are dedicated, driven and passionate, but not only about sport, but about the well-being of the pupils in their care. We firmly believe there's something very special about sport here at Berkhamsted and we do warmly invite you down to come and see our facilities and what we have on offer in the future.